latitude and longitude. If Earth was truly a globe, then every line of latitude south of the equator would have to measure a gradually smaller and smaller circumference the farther south traveled. If Earth is an extended plane, however, then every line of latitude south of the equator should measure a gradually larger and larger circumference the farther south traveled. Practical distance measurements taken from the Australian Handbook, Almanac, Shippers, and Importers Directory state that the straight line distance between Sydney and Nelson is 1,550 statute miles with a given difference in longitude of 22 degrees, 2 minutes, and 14 seconds. Therefore, if 22 degrees, 2 minutes, and 14 seconds out of 360 degrees is 1,550 miles, the entirety would measure 25,182 miles, which is not only larger than the globe is said to be at the equator, but a whole 4,262 miles greater than it would be at Sydney's southern latitude on a globe of given proportions. From near Cape Horn, Chile, to Port Phillip in Melbourne, Australia, the distance is 10,500 miles, or 143 degrees of longitude away. Factoring the remaining degrees to 360 makes for a total distance of 26,430 miles around this particular latitude, which is over 1,500 miles wider than Earth is supposed to be at the equator, and many more thousands of miles wider than it is supposed to be at such southern latitudes. Similar calculations made from the Cape of Good Hope, South Africa, to Melbourne, Australia, at an average latitude of 35.5 degrees south, have given an approximate figure of over 25,000 miles, which is again greater than the Earth's supposed circumference at the equator. Meanwhile, calculations from Sydney, Australia, to Wellington, New Zealand, at an average of 37.5 degrees south, have given an approximate circumference of 25,500 miles, greater still. According to the globe model, the circumference of Earth at 37.5 degrees south latitude should be only 19,000 757 statute miles, almost 6,000 miles less than such practical measurements. The fact that many captains navigating south of the equator, assuming the globular theory, have found themselves drastically out of reckoning, more so the farther south traveled, also testifies to the fact that the Earth is not a ball. For example, during Captain James Clark Ross's voyages around the Antarctic circumference, he often wrote in his journal, perplexed at how they routinely found themselves out of accordance with their charts, stating that they found themselves an average of 12 to 16 miles outside their reckoning every day, later on farther south as much as 29 miles. Lieutenant Charles Wilkes commanded a United States Navy exploration expedition to the Antarctic from 1838 to 1842, and in his journals also mentioned being consistently east of his reckoning sometimes over 20 miles in less than 18 hours. Quoting Reverend Thomas Milner, In the South Hemisphere, navigators to India have often fancied themselves east of the Cape when still west, and have been driven ashore on the African coast, which, according to their reckoning, lay behind them. This misfortune happened to a fine frigate, the Challenger, in 1845. How came Her Majesty's ship Conqueror to be lost? How have so many other noble vessels, perfectly sound, perfectly manned, perfectly navigated, been wrecked in calm weather, not only in dark night or in a fog, but in broad daylight and sunshine, in the former case upon the coasts, and in the latter upon sunken rocks, from being out of reckoning? The simple answer is that Earth is not a ball. In the globe model, Antarctica is an ice continent which covers the bottom of the ball from 78 degrees south latitude to 90, and is therefore not much more than 12,000 miles in circumference. Many early explorers, including Captain Cook and James Clark Ross, however, in attempting to circumnavigate Antarctica, took upwards of three to four years and clocked between 50,000 and 60,000 miles around. Captain George Nares, on his Challenger expedition, also made an indirect but complete circumnavigation of Antarctica traversing 69,000 miles, which is entirely inconsistent with the globe model. Hervé Raboni, who circumnavigated the world during the 1993 Whitbread Yacht Race, has recently become a flat-earther himself, and claims that the deception is done 
through the hoax of magnetic declination. Hervé insists that on our flat Earth, magnetic declination does not exist, and the addition of this globe-based chart and mathematics to navigation calculations is what keeps pilots and sailors on course. 15. Arctic versus Antarctic.